So um, well, another so one one uh, one word that's useful actually to 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 describe this or to think about uh, the role that technologies play socially and culturally. Uh, there's a word which is the affordances. So there's a little kind of literature about this, uh, uh, like using this word in this kind of way, where we might say that certain kinds of technologies have certain kinds of affordances, right? Technologies make it maybe easier or harder to do certain kinds of things, right? They, uh, they can kind of uh, change in subtle ways uh, social and cultural practices uh, in such in ways which make some things more easy than other things, or maybe some things more difficult uh, than other things. And this is kind of obvious, you know. If you think about certain kinds of uh, interfaces, uh, you know, they really they kind of invite you to do certain things, and they disinvite you, as it were, to do other kinds of things, you know. And some kinds of interfaces are quite famous for this, you know. When people think about Apple, uh, you know, sometimes they say, "Oh, this is a very uh, intuitive." Uh, interface, you know, but then we also, we have this word jailbroken, you know, when people say an iPhone is jailbroken, they're saying, oh, you can do this other thing, uh, which kind of bypasses or goes behind the in interface, but then another word is introduced where they say, oh, but then Apple can brick the phone, right, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with this kind of idea, but, oh, the, you know, the thing that can just basically turn into quite a heavy paperweight, because they don't like you messing with the affordances that they have designed the interface to foreground or to obscure from you, right? So technologies have these uh, these affordances. Any any technology does, and certain kinds of technologies have particular musical affordances, right? So when we're thinking about, uh, you know, if we think about the role in which distributive media forms had for the emergence of music, right? So for example. In the 1970s, in the Bronx, uh, just after the word remix was kind of invented and was in use also in New York City to describe um, basically engineering, uh, uh, engineering practices where people were extending uh, pieces of music to make it easier or to make people dance to it for longer. Right. So uh, technologies have affordances in that, for instance, you know, in block parties in the 1970s, basically, when people were inventing hip hop, one of the things that they were doing was that a technology which had seemed up until that point to be an end user, an end point uh, technology of consumption, right, which is like turntables and vinyl, which was supposed to be a kind of a home consumption kind of technology, started to get used as a productive technology. Right. So. Uh, if we got two turn t two turntables, and if we got the same record and put it on on each uh, each turntable, we could uh, precisely kind of synchronize uh, in such a way that um, we could extend the good bit of that piece of music, right? We could extend uh, the we could extend the good bit uh, indefinitely. Right, we could make it last for quite a long time, and obviously people also started to do other things. For instance, scratch. Right, they started to to scratch the uh, scratch the uh, the records. Right, and so these these technologies that had these affordances, which had hadn't, you know it hadn't been designed for that. Right, it wasn't really built into it that that should be a thing that was. Um, done with it, started to, once people kind of see these affordances and start kind of experimenting with them, right, they start kind of drawing them out and teasing out the implications of this particular kind of bodily practice, actually, as a way of kind of engaging with these uh, technologies. In the course of doing that, they begin to develop aesthetics, right? They develop kind of stylistics and aesthetics of uh, ways of doing this which and and they become better and better and better at it right and they start to get virtuosic right they start to become virtuosos people start to say that person over there is a master at uh, this particular kind of fiddly technological thing uh, that they're doing with the music right and so we can see we can see that happen right so we can see the aesthetic implications of that technology which basically kind of lays the ground for the idea of remix as it now knocks around in our heads when we're looking at like memes or like animated cat gifs or whatever uh, online uh, the ground is kind of laid as it were 
uh, for that to kind of happen through these musical um, these musical practices, right? But another thing which happens, uh, particularly, I'm just sort of fast forwarding a bit now, but say around, and that's funny, you know, that's also kind of musically derived, you know, it's cassette technology. Anyway, um, uh, as of around nineteen, from about nineteen ninety nine onwards, right, we have this kind of explosion, this kind of thermonuclear. Uh, distributive explosion, right, which the kind of uh, mainstream uh, commercial uh, media industries are still actually trying to deal with, this explosion of technologies which allows people to distribute uh, and kind of reproduce music files, digitized music files, uh, at low cost. Right, so we have a kind of file sharing explosion. Right, we have uh, a whole range of technologies which uh, emerge, which allow people to share massive, unprecedentedly massive amounts of music at low cost. Right, and this is like piracy, you know, and there is a kind of a legal, a legal response to that, right? And there is a legal debate which is still taking place around that, right? But uh, I'm actually not very interested in the morality or the ethics of what, you know, are we supposed to say that's right or wrong or it's good or bad? You know, we're sticking it to the man or we're not, or uh, I'm not, not necessarily very interested in the way those debates uh play out, but one of the things that I am interested in is that this kind of technological explosion, right, this, um, this like mass of technologies which allows for kind of swarms of uh, media kind of proliferating and it allows for uh, some kind of actually utopian ideas around, um, you know, our collective, uh, you know, the, the human uh, you know, the history of recorded sound as a collective archive, which anybody could be able to access at any time uh, at very low cost. Uh, you know, those ideas are pretty uh, appealing. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's true. And that's, that's interesting. But one of the things that I'm especially interested in is that uh, suddenly, um, you know, from 1998 or 1999 up until now, basically, any uh, music recorded at any time in any place, pretty much, uh, you can you can find that, right? And you you can find that pretty much for for close to nothing, right? But also any uh, any uh, including the most cutting edge uh, software with which to produce music, you can also access that, right? So. Um, before, where we were kind of tethered to uh, certain kinds of technologies, like maybe turntables, uh, now uh, it becomes possible for anybody to access these technologies and anybody to access the cultural media, like the actual MP3 files, uh, with which to uh, intervene into the kind of sign economy or the musical economy the, the musical economy of signs, whatever you want to call that, it becomes possible for anybody to to do that and to to access uh, this stuff, right? So there's a particular kind, what I'm getting to is, uh, I'll tell you like a kind of a musical story, as it were, presently, or, or, or a story about about this in relation to music, but this this uh, the story about music that I'm going to tell you actually hinges on this... Uh, this technological development and this set of technological developments and this normalization, as it were, of a technological, a distributive technological infrastructure, right? Where in much the same way that like the turntable and vinyl was originally a kind of end point consumption technology, which became a production technology, in much the same way, you know, if you have a networked uh, computer, a networked computer, which it seemed to be like, oh, maybe you were supposed to just listen to things on, on this uh, device. You kind of use it a bit like stereo or something. Uh, it becomes a productive becomes a productive technology, right? And then we can think about like millions of these network computers all kind of talking to each other. And obviously there's sort of people uh, sort of stuck to these devices. But anyway, uh, that becomes a kind of a, a, a productive a productive network, right? And it starts producing uh, sound. It starts producing whole... Uh, genres, in fact, 
of, uh, of, of music uh, out of the music of the past. It starts kind of reconstituting the music of the past and sort of pumping it out. And now, of course, you can go and see this stuff. Uh, you know, you can just look at it on, on, on YouTube. You know, it's, it's suddenly kind of all out there.